All right, here we are, Hackspot.com, Battle of the Mini Mills 2010. Uh, we're going to be comparing the Tag Mini Mill, uh, which is, we just received in, and the uh, Harbor Freight uh, Sieg X2 uh, Mini Mill, and the Sieg uh, SX2 or Super X2, which uh, should arrive Tuesday. Uh, first thing we're going to do is we're just going to start by setting up this Tag Mini Mill. Uh, this Tag Mini Mill is um, Obviously, it's a miniature milling machine. It uh, comes in three pieces. You get the table uh, along with the uh, upright and spindle. And these come in separate boxes. Uh, and uh, basically, they're bolted into the uh, hardboard in the box with uh, some, some nuts and washers. Just get a 7 16 uh, wrench, unbolt the pieces from the box, take them out. Also, in the box with the spindle and upright is the quarter horsepower motor. We went for the upgraded uh, quarter horsepower motor for the uh, mini mill, and we'll have to mount that onto the spindle. The first thing we're going to do to uh, to set up our Tag mini mill is we need to clean the surface, the mating surface of the base and the upright, really good. Make sure there's no uh, packing grease or residue on these two surfaces before we try and put them together. So I'm just going to take a little uh, WD-40 and uh, clean off any packing grease, any residue. Just do this until the, uh, using a little shop paper towel here or red rag, whatever you got, and clean this off until the towel comes away clean. And do the same thing to the upright and again just make sure it's nice and clean. I'm using WD-40. WD-40 is uh, in addition to uh, being a lubricant and a protectant is also a cleaner and I find the smell of it less objectionable than other cleaners like mineral spirits or uh, denatured alcohol or something like that but you could use whatever you got. Just make sure you clean all the WD-40 residue off as well. And then once you get that all nice and cleaned off, the next thing we want to do is we want to take the, uh, the upright and slide it on this bolt. You just want to check when you push that up and those two mating surfaces come together, you want to just check and make sure you don't have any gaps in those two mating surfaces. And once you verify that visually, just take the washer and the nut, thread that on, begin to cinch it up. We're going to cinch it up, but not all the way, because we want to be able to adjust the uh, and adjust the angle of the upright to the table and align them, tram them. So I'm just going to take a, a wrench here, and I'm just going to snug this up just not too tight, tight enough to hold that out in place and then just make sure I don't have any gap there which I don't so that looks good and then uh, now we're ready to to tram the uh, spindle to the table and we're going to do that with a, a machinist square this is a machinist square, it's a very accurate square and so we're just going to bring the uh, spindle head down towards the table so we can check it, check the squareness with this square and if we need to adjust it we'll just tap the tap the upright with a soft face dead blow hammer until we get it lined up square with the table. So I'm just going to take this and I'm just going to set it up against the, the head and I'm going to look, put a white piece of paper back behind it. I don't know, I'm not sure if you can see that. There's actually a gap at the bottom of the, uh, of the spindle. And that tells me that the column needs to come this way to line up. So I'll just take my dead blow hammer, give it a couple taps, like that. Soft taps, not real hard. Don't want to damage anything. And then I'll just double check, 
Looks like you could use a little bit more. And it's a little closer, but not quite there. And that's looking pretty good. Could maybe use one more tap. And so what we're going to do is just get that as lined up, the spindle head with the table as lined up as you can. And that looks pretty good. Don't see any gaps. And so, once that's done, go ahead and tighten this up. Nice and, nice and tight. Now, to get a more accurate tram, what you'd want to do is to use a dial test indicator like this and attach it to the spindle and then index off the table and then move the dial test indicator to the other side of the table and make sure that you basically get zero reading on both sides. Uh, I don't actually have a DTI holder that will fit this little mill so we'll have to save that for later. The, uh, the square method will be good enough for now. So the next thing we want to do, the plug on here comes covered in some sort of red grease. I'm not sure that's supposed to stay on there. I don't think it is, so I'm just going to clean some of that off. But uh, next thing we'll have to do is mount the motor to the, uh, to the spindle. So we'll just loosen these... Uh, these two Allen screws on the top here. And this little block right here is the uh, block that the motor mounts to, a little aluminum block. And this aluminum block actually um, is adjustable up and down so that you can adjust the uh, alignment of the pulleys. So we're just gonna take that, slide it on, put the bolts back in place, in theory. And begin to tighten the bolts down. And there's, you can see Where this front bolt actually goes in is actually a, a slot that allows for some adjustment so that you can adjust the belt position on the pulleys which changes your speed and also uh, the tightness of the belt. So let me just grab an allen key here real quick. Size here. 